Hello guys, I am Peter from Builder Boeing. It's been a very long time since my last video, perhaps even a year. I don't know what uh, time just flew and I reckon real life happened with uh, family and work and the house that needed a bit of renovation. Uh, the kids are getting older so they are put to bed later in the evening and once they are tucked in uh, I don't have uh, much time before I'm going to bed so uh, the, the weekends are also busy so there's just not much time and uh, that's why the motivation has been uh, not that big over the last year but some things has been going on and let me just run through some of them first of all uh, last Christmas I got a 3D printer and uh, I will recommend that to everyone building a cockpit use those few hundred dollars on a 3D printer because you can just make so many things for your cockpit easy and cheap. Both make things cheaper but also things that, that are difficult to find is just a matter of downloading the model and printing. Example, over here that eyeball vent 3D printed. Up here in the overhead, all these uh, knobs, 3D printed, the compass over there, 3D printed, and over here on the side, that chart holder there, 3D printed. That's not 3D printed though, that is bought from Amazon, uh, from, from eBay. But that one over there uh, for the mount for the um, handheld microphone, 3D printed. And this grill, which is quite difficult to find uh, online, also 3D printed. I'll do a separate video on uh, 3D printing. Furthermore, I've also bought two new CDUs, FMCs, uh, used from the Netherlands, second hand. And uh, I've installed them and they are working and it's just great having two so you can have your routing on one of them and then you can use uh, the other one for pushback and weather and I, different, uh, different uh, things, secondary things that you need while, while flying around. I had to uh, take my lower ICAS out because that went from, let's see if I can point, from here and then it went over here, it was a uh, monitor from an old laptop and so now I'm stuck with the problem that my upper ICAS goes from here and then down there to that edge you can see. So I'm not able to put in a screen here and slide it underneath so either I need to find a square monitor or change that screen to something that's not as high so that I can slide a secondary lower ICAS in under, under there. Talking about monitors, uh, my primary flight display and navigation displays has also been changed from 19 inch monitors to um, 22 inch monitors and you can perhaps see over here that it covers the clock as well. You can see that idle message running between the screens now. So now I have digital clocks. I tried with uh, seven digit displays to make clocks without a moving hand and it worked but it was just a hassle to um, to make and to interface. Now with these screens I just need seven switches and then a screen that's wide enough. Um, it has to be a, a white screen monitor. You can't use the normal um, what's it called, 19 by 10 I reckon, it needs to be even wider, oh, 14 by 10, it needs to be a white screen, otherwise it will just be too high to fit. I reckon they're around 22, 23 inch monitors. I also bought a few interface cards, uh, especially for the overhead, so now I have four master cards up there, um, but installing a second, or a, a fourth master card, uh, I had to rewire almost everything to the new master card. So I had to, to change all the, the wires from between the different cards. And in that process, a few wires came loose and I need to like get them back on and reconfigure, rewire and then reconfigure the entire overhead, which is just a time consuming thing. And I've just pr postponed that for long enough by now. Also an extra master card for the pedestal, uh, but that is, something that I haven't started yet, an extra MasterCard and an extra uh, seven digit display card from Open Cockpits. It's been quite 
uh, a mess in wires and stuff laying around and then I just started a few weeks ago in order to get some new energy in here. I just started from behind the main instrument panel and just moved my way uh, this way and now I'm right there by that white mark. It's, the white mark is something else but that's where I am right now in tidying up. So everything from here and that way is tidy, nice and tidy and everything from here and that way is still a mess. But that's my way of uh, re boosting my energy for the cockpit is just to tidy up things. Um, and I've always been uh, envy of people with uh, good wiring skills because my wiring is always a mess. Uh, so I've actually spent a few weeks on rewiring my entire cockpit uh, backstage. And you can see one of the examples here, this wire that runs down here is now not just hanging loose, but is nice and tidy and I've actually been doing that to the entire back side here. You can see the wires coming here. They are somewhat nice and tidy running down to uh, a wire channel that I've installed here that goes across but you can see the wires there running nice and tidy upwards. Not a big mess as they used to. Except for this power supply here, this is still a bit of a mess and there's an interface card here. But apart from that, I've gotten rid of most of the wires here uh, in this part of the cockpit, which was a good thing and it uh, really gave me new energy. And when I finished this project last week, I, uh, I was quite content and happy. And then I turned on the cockpit and I blew a fuse in the house. Boom, no lights in the half the house. So right now I've, uh, I've uh, taken everything out of the back of my computers. As you can see here, nothing is connected. And what you are witnessing right now in a few seconds will be a live test of me turning on the computers and see if I blow a fuse again. If I do, I have to find out what is wrong. Uh, so if the light goes out, watch it turn on this switch, then I haven't found the mistake yet. Ah, there's still lights here. So at least now my cockpit isn't blowing the fuse in the house. So now it's just a matter of finding out what caused that short circuit. I've never experienced that before. The lights just blinked for a few times and then boom, everything was dark. So now I need, I reckon I need to plug in everything once at a time and find out when the fuse is going to be blown again. And then I have um, found the sinner. So that might take a few weeks. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. I promise you to give you more regular updates. You guys take care. Bye-bye.